Hello everyone, I'm Pranthar Ghosh from Dartmouth College and I'm going to talk about a new dynamic algorithm for densest sub-hypergraphs. This is a joint work with Suman Beda, Shayan Bhattacharya and Jayesh Chaudhuri. So let me begin by uh, telling you about the problem. So the problem we study here is the densest sub-hypergraph problem in the dynamic setting. Here the input hypergraph arrives as a sequence of a hyperedge insertions and deletions, and these are weighted hyperedges. And for a subset of nodes, let define the density of the of this subset as the sum of the edge weights of the edges induced by this subset S divided by the number of nodes. So for instance, let's consider this subset. So the edges induced will be these two, and then the density will be uh, this uh, a sum of edge weights 31 over uh, the number of nodes 7, that is 4.43. So our goal is to find the subset with maximum density, as well as to find the value of this maximum density. So these are queries that we'll be getting. And our goal is to maintain a data structure so as to uh, make updates as fast as possible and also to uh, answer with the queries uh, quickly. Okay. So uh, another variant of this uh, problem that will come up is the unweighted version where all edges have unit weight. And then the density is simply the number of edges induced by S divided by the size of S. Okay. So now that we have defined the problem, so let me give me give you some uh, background. So uh, for the rest uh, special version of this problem, where we only look at graphs, that is hypergraphs of rank two, this is the densest subgraph problem, which is a very well studied problem and a fundamental primitive in data mining. And uh, it has wide applications in let's say community detection, PJPB backing, spam detection, real time story identification, and so on. And this has been studied in the dynamic model also by several works. So one drawback of this uh, sub subgraph problem is that it fails to capture certain real world scenarios, which are actually captured by the densest sub hypergraph problem. So let me give an example. Let's consider the real time story identification. So uh, if you want to identify stories in re trending stories in real time. So we make uh, real world entities as nodes that by real world entities, I mean, let's say famous personalities, organizations and so on. And we create a hyper edge via among a subset of entities if they, they appear together in a tweet or post. And the number of posts containing this uh, set of entities uh, is assigned as the weight of the, the corresponding hyper edge. So our goal, is, uh, if we solve the uh, weighted genesis uh, of hypergraph, which we will call WDSH in short, on this dynamic hypergraph, then we can identify the story. So again, let me give you an example. So let's say we want to identify this uh, recently trending story about uh, uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock. So uh, as tweets come up about this uh, event, uh, well, the hyper edges will be added in this network like this. And then if we solve WDSH, we'll probably identify the densest subset as uh, this set and then identify the story. So if it was crucial that then that the uh, hypergraph here is dynamic because the it is rapidly changing as posts are added and maybe some posts are detected as fake news and then deleted. It is also crucial that it, uh, this hypergraph has to be weighted because let's say we have some unrelated story uh, uh, posts here about unrelated entities and to solve to make these nodes of interest stand out we need to assign edges uh, assign weights to these edges as uh, uh, which is equal to the number of posts mentioning them and then these uh, entities will stand out and uh, we will identify the story and finally, uh, we really need a hypergraph here and not a graph because let's say a standard graph formulation would be to join every pair of nodes by an edge. and But then the density of a single uh, post or sing, a single uh, hypergraph uh, edge would be proportional to the number of entities mentioned, which is often inaccurate. We want uh, one post mentioning, let's say, 100 entities and a one post mentioning two entities to have the equal weightage. Okay. So 
now uh, other applications include let's say uh, identify trending topics in just a tag network like stack overflow which is very similar uh, it's just that let's say we want to find trendy topics in the last three days then uh, we you should delete uh, edges from uh, which are older than three days and so the graph is dynamic and uh, let's say we want to identify a group of researchers from the DBLP network who has had the most impact in the last five years, then we make each researcher a node and uh, may form a hyper edge between uh, among the uh, among a set of authors if they co-author a paper together and the weight of a hyper edge is the number of citations. Then solving WDSH on this network identifies a group of researchers with the most impact and we delete the hyper edges which are more less than, more than five years old and then the, the and we can do that because we are working with a dynamic hypergraph okay so these were the applications now uh, let me come to our results so for hypergraph with n nodes and r uh, and rank r so we give the first approximation algorithm where the approximation is independent of r uh, in, to be precise, we give a near optimal one plus epsilon approximation in poly logarithmic update time. And we can handle weights as large as polynomial in the uh, number of nodes n. So compare this with the state of the art uh, by who and Chen in 2017, who gave a one plus epsilon times R squared approximation uh, in the same update time, but their update time was amortized. Our is even better worst case. And they could only handle small weights, which was polylog, polylog in N. And if you look at graphs, uh, that is rank two hypergraphs, uh, the, we, this is the first one plus epsilon approximation algo for the age weighted case. The best known before was by Salani and Wang, who uh, gave a deterministic polylog and update time algorithm and got one plus epsilon approximation, but only for the unweighted case. Okay. Now let me talk a brief, uh, briefly about our experimental results. We perform experiments, experiments on real-world hypergraphs, and uh, we, we consider both unweighted and weighted, and both uh, fully dynamic and insert-only settings. And we see that it's a significant improvement over the state of the art in terms of both accuracy and efficiency. So. For smaller data sets, we have seven to 10 times speed up at comparable accuracy. And for larger data sets, we have 55 to 90% improvement in accuracy for similar update times. And we also compare against a benchmarks uh, uh, algorithm that solves the problem exactly using an LP solver. For the insert only case, we have like 100 times speed up with less than a few percentage of error. And for the field, you know, fully dynamic case for larger data sets, we have 10, per, uh, 10 times speed up with less than 10 percent error and two to five uh, times speed up for less than 4 percent error. Okay, so now let me tell you about our techniques. So assume that you are given an algorithm that solves the unweighted case. That is for unweighted hypergraphs, it can solve the denser sub hypergraph problem and even if parallelities are allowed. So now consider this naive algorithm. So you receive an, an edge with weight WE and you make as many copies of the unweighted edge E and you feed it to the algorithm solving the unweighted case. And if an edge is deleted, you delete all copies of it. So this is just uh, running the algorithm on an unweighted version of the weighted graph. And this will be correct. But the issue is that the update time will be proportional to the maximum weight of a, of an edge. Uh, and then uh, the, that will be very inefficient. But this will be efficient if the maximum weight of an edge happens to be small. So this gives us the idea that uh, uh, if we can, if we, go, what if we can scale down the weights, to get an equivalent instance where the weights are small, that's the maximum weight is small, and then we run the naive algo on this instance. So how do we do that? We do that into a, uh, to one key step, that is we do uh, use a sampling procedure, and then the weights are scaled down to get a, a equivalent instance, uh, such as that we can uh, recover the density of the original graph from this instance, and the weights are small, so we are good. But second uh, step is finding if we, this is what we assume that uh, as a black box that we have this 
well, algorithm for the unweighted case. So we actually need to find an efficient algorithm for the unweighted case, and then we can uh, use this naive algo. Okay. So I'll briefly tell you how we achieve these two steps. So for the scaling purpose, uh, we have to, we want to scale scale the weights of a hyperweight hyper grief curve G to get a new one H such that the max weight of H is roughly, let's say at most R log M. And uh, if, if we are given, uh, if we can uh, get the maximum density of H, then we can recover the max density of G. So the sampling is done in such a way, if we an AG with a W is inserted, then we insert actually C copies of the unweighted AG where CE is uh, generated from the binomial distribution W e comma Q, where this probability Q is roughly log n over rho for some parameter rho, uh, at least W max over R. So think of it like having W e many copies of the unweighted edge E and only uh, and sampling uh, each of them with independently with probability Q. So this is just what this distribution is doing. So now call the un unweighted uh, call the weighted version of this resultant graph that we have inserted as H. Then we can prove that the maximum weight of H is uh, roughly uh, W max of G times this probability Q, which turns out to be at most R log n. So we are good on the first property. For the second one, we show that the maximum density of H will be roughly log n if and only if the, this parameter rho was taken to be the max density of G. So gives, this gives us this idea that make parallel guesses of rho in parts of one plus epsilon and identify the guess rho star for which the corresponding graph H will have max density log n. And then uh, the max uh, by this lemma, the max density of G will be roughly one plus minus epsilon times uh, rho star for this guess rho star. Okay. Now let's look at step two. So we need to find an algorithm for the unweighted density of hypergraph. So as I mentioned before, Saulani and Wang got a one plus epsilon approximation for the unweighted case, but it was only for graphs. That is then the dense subgraph problem. So we build on their algorithm to extend to hypergraphs. So we use a primal dual approach like them. And in short, basically the dual would lo dual looks like this, where it can be interpreted as a load balancing problem, where AHE puts some load on each of its nodes V and the total load it needs to distribute is one among all its nodes. And so the goal would be to minimize the maximum load on a single node. So the tot if we denote the total node by LV, then uh, uh, we see that if uh, no, uh, an AG is uh, uh, putting non-zero uh, load on a vertex V, then uh, and LV happens to be greater than LU for another node U in that edge, then we can simply transfer some of its load to U and still maintain all the constant and doesn't increase the objective value. So we might as well assume that LV is at most LU for all the other nodes U in that edge if E is putting non-zero load on V. So we get a local constraint on, on each edge. And we show that maintaining this local constant approximately would give us a near optimal solution to this dual and therefore a near optimal solution to UDSH. Now, how do we maintain this? Well, we did uh, similar to what Salani Wang did. They re re reduced this problem to a graph orientation problem and we would reduce to a analogous hypergraph orientation problem. And then we extend their data structure that solved the graph orientation problem. We extend it to maintain this hypergraph orientation. And therefore, we are actually maintaining an approximate solution to UDSH. Okay. So that were the, the theoretical results. And now the, for the experiments, we plot these uh, graphs. So we're comparing with the benchmark HWC. And we see that more or less consistently, we have our algorithm, which is in red, we have better error uh, than uh, the benchmark for appropriate, by appropriately choosing the epsilon. And uh, for time, uh, it consistently does better than, than both the exact algorithm and the benchmark. And it is to be noted that these, uh, because this uh, uh, algorithm HWC has this sawtooth behavior because, because it's, uh, uh, 
who update time is amortized, whereas ours is worst case. So ours is a smooth curve. Similar trends, uh, this is was for unweighted uh, hypergraphs. So similar trend that happens for weighted hypergraphs. We outperform HWC mostly in relative error. Uh, and as we can see, and for the, the time we do much, much better because uh, their algorithm is simply duplicating an edge uh, as many times as it's weight. Whereas we do the sampling to make the edge weight small. And that's why we uh, have much better update time. And we also, with respect to the exact algorithm, we do consistently better. Okay. So to conclude, uh, we studied the dense sub hypergraph problem uh, in the weighted version in the dynamic setting and got a near optimal algorithm, which is the first approximation algorithm uh, with ratio independent of R. And for the first near optimal uh, algorithm for the edge weighted case. And we also uh, perform uh, extensive experiments on real world data sets and show that our algorithm outperform the state of the art in both accuracy and efficiency. So, for future directions, I'd like to mention a couple. Uh, our update time dependence on R is R squared, and on epsilon is epsilon to the minus six. So, for the first one, can we improve it to R, which would be optimal? And the second uh, one. Doctor, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. um, we are I'm done. four minutes above time. Okay, so yeah, I'm done. So yeah, there can we improve the dependence on poly epsilon? Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to take questions now.